Howdy folks, today we got this lovely uh, teal Strauss amplifier. I think Strauss is an Australian company, but they get the amps made in China. Probably bring them here and maybe rebrand them or probably don't do a single thing with them. Leave them in a box and on sell them to customers here. Um, nice simple design. Here's the whole circuit board here. And uh, that's it. Now, the output, or I should say the speaker extension uh, lead was broken. Uh, now, this is all plastic. I hate these things. Th these parts are good where it switches. As the, uh, as the lead plugs in, it disconnects each one of these leads. And, uh, but this bit's plastic, and that's the bit that always breaks on all these amps. Well, not just these ones, but any of them that come with these plastic leads. And I've seen these on on high-end amplifiers too. Uh, so I'm going to replace it with a beautiful switched lead, uh, switched socket, I should say, this one here. Metal construction, it's just plastic around the outside for insulation, and it's switched. So what happens is, is that this is your signal, this is ground, and then, if I can focus, focus, get a focus, yeah, getting there, almost. Hey, these two lugs are switched. So right now, there's continuity between these two. When you plug your speaker lead into this, or guitar lead, or whatever we use this for, these disconnect. So, looking back at the amp, the red and yellow wire are connected, let me see if I can grab this, across this terminal where my thumb is. When you plug a lead in, it pushes this terminal up away from the other side where the red connects, and it disconnects itself. Capish. So what happens is, is that um, you then use an external speaker, and it disconnects the internal speaker, because you can only have one speaker going at a time on this amplifier, not two. So this is a perfect switch for that. So I'm going to replace that. Um, am I going to keep the amp or sell the amp? To be honest, it's probably a little bit too small for what I do. And looking at the controls, it has a volume dial and that's it. Tone dial, tremolo intensity and speed and reverb. And you've also got a power switch. So one, no standby switch, which is fine, but you know, still. And uh, it's only got a volume dial. No master volume, no gain, and all that stuff. The The beautiful side, and you know, admittedly it is on a circuit board, it is very simple. There is a handful of components on here. Um, so starting on this end, you've got your output transform, uh, sorry, your power transformer coming out, goes to your power switch. I don't know if it's worth modifying it to um, to have a standby switch or not, but you know, if I'm keeping it, maybe. If I'm not, eh. Uh, there's your pilot light, uh, everything then goes into the circuit board in here, got a couple of little capacitors, there's your main fuse, so you got to open the amp to replace the fuse. If I was keeping it, again, maybe I might add an external fuse socket, like the ones you twist and pull out, maybe, if I was keeping it. A um, couple of diodes or re diode rectification here, so it's a full bridge wave a full wave bridge rectifier um nice big capacitors these look like five watt and seven watt capacitors maybe or three watt and five watt depending on what they are can't you can't really tell with size i mean yeah um it's always hard to uh, then again maybe i'm just an idiot uh and then you got a big filter cap here another little smaller filter cap here and that's basically the board there is a little tlo 72 op amp chip in there and that's probably just the driver for the relay uh, for the uh, reverb then you got your beautiful ribbon cables that are used for mass production cheap and nasty um, tube amplifiers and then we have a separate circuit board for our tubes and the sockets so it's got two 12ax7s and two el84s now i got this off the customer i've bought it um, and the EL84s were shot. I just replaced them with some spare ones I had lying around, so these are not brand new. 
However, they are from a match set, so um, I will replace them with a brand new one again if I'm keeping the amp. The 12AX7s are fine, they work. Um, looking at the condition of the circuit board for where the tubes are, it's actually okay. I am going to reflow. Let's see if I can focus in here. Focus. <laughs> Is it going to focus? There we go. Sort of. Okay. I am going to reflow the tube sockets because they're all circuit board. They don't look horrible, but there is a little bit of corrosion around them, and uh, yeah, you kind of kind of see that one in there. Excuse the darkness and the lack of focus. There we go. You can see the soldering effort. It's just it's pretty crusty. So I'm going to clean that up. First things first. Let's replace this. Now I found this sitting inside the chassis, and if we zoom up where I actually found it was resting right up against this nut uh, this bolt sticking out here holding the chassis in so it may well have had the output transformer shorting against ground and which is probably what may have caused the issue so I'm gonna replace some of these parts and um, come back to you in a second oh the other thing little eminent speaker here it's, you know, cheap, nasty OEM one. It's nothing like a, a Tonka or a, um, what's some of the other eminence speakers. Anyway, it's not a, it's not an amazing one. And it's, I believe it's only 10 inch. So, you know, if, if you want a nice, good sound, you'd get a 12 inch. Believe it or not, the, the baffle is actually big enough to have a 12 inch speaker in there. Um, I can't flip around right now because my, uh, I can't do that right now because uh, I'm going handheld. But um, anyway, we'll leave the 10-inch speaker in there for now. I'm going to replace this extension socket, clean up the solder joints, and um, yeah, see how we go. Stay tuned. All right, so what I've done so far is remove the old broken speaker socket off these. And what I'm going to do is replace it like I said with this one here now the way to wire this is that uh, both our ground wires both that black wire and this black wire are going to go to this lug here which is going to connect to ground the yellow wire is the signal coming uh, out of the trans power, uh, output transformer along with the black that's the signal that's going to go into this pin on the left hand side so if I'm looking at it this way it's the pin here on the bottom okay and then this pin here on the right hand side that's the one that's going to connect to the red because the red one goes to the other speaker okay the reason you can't reverse this is because if you connect the yellow wire the signal coming out of the output transformer to this and you plug something in, it's going to disconnect this and look for a signal here. So this is the pin that you need and the pin on ground and that's pretty straightforward there. Okay, so stay tuned. I'm going to do that and get back to you in a second. All right, so what we have here is, let's have a look here. Let's see if I can focus. What is it with the focus today? Eh. That's all right. So the two ground wires are down here below and we have our yellow signal wire going into this and coming out and going to the red wire, which is inside here. You can see that red wire and that's going to the speaker. And then the black wire is going to ground, etc., etc. What uh, is happening is we put a socket in, it disconnects the red wire, but the yellow wire still remains and then it pushes the signal out through the socket instead of redirecting it to the yellow and your ground stays as ground. So that's how you connect a switch to switch that looks like this. These switches are also used in a lot of pedals because um, you want the switch to uh, turn on the pedal. Uh, usually a battery is connected to one side, uh, something like that. Um, yeah, and it basically stops your battery from going flat. So if you have a guitar pedal 
or even a guitar preamplifier, like an acoustic guitar preamplifier, and you're wondering why the battery's always going flat, I'm going to say that you're either buying cheap batteries, highly unlikely, because even cheap batteries are going to sit there and last, or you're leaving your pedal or your guitar plugged in, and it's connecting the battery and draining the battery. So anyway, that's it. I'm going to um, put this back together. Uh, I've already reflowed the the um, valve socket, ch uh, tube socket, um, uh, sockets, the solder joints on the tube sockets, so they're all done. And uh, I'm going to put this back together and um, give it another play, and then if I do decide to keep this, I'll replace the output tubes with brand new ones. But anyway, that's it. That's how you fix a Strauss, whatever model this is, SRT15. There we go, it's right here. Strauss SRT15. Anyway, everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this short but um, quick fix video on how to fix your amplifier. Yeah, don't use plastic parts, buy metal ones. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, blah, 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 like, share, all that stuff. And i uh, got some more videos coming up. Um, part 2 of a lot of videos. I've had a lot of videos with part 1s. Part 2 is coming up. Um, from about 6 months ago, I had a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe that's nearly finished. I keep saying that, but it's nearly there. Been so busy touring and gigging, I haven't had time to touch it. A PV Classic 50 that's going to get a recap. I've got a, I think, a twin reverb, so nice, big, loud Fender twin reverb that had been rebuilt years ago, but um, suffering from some issues where it constantly, or randomly, I should say, while you're playing, will go... <coughs> so it could be a loose tube socket, it could be a faulty cap, uh, you know, these things break, these things happen. I've got a Gibson SG coming up with uh, that's going to do a rewire. It's got an active neck pickup, active EMG neck pickup. Um, what else? I've got a Warmoth kit that I finally got the parts for. That's coming up soon too. What else is there? The big 8x10 Trace Elliott base cabinet. Um, and as you saw recently, I've also got a Baseman 50, a Fender Baseman 50. That's my own personal amp, and I'm looking forward to getting the parts for that next week and finishing that off so I can take it and gig with it. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, share the video, like the video, tell your friends. I could really use more subscriptions, and I appreciate all the subscriptions I get because YouTube has now officially demonetized my entire account. And uh, anyway, so, um, you know, every bit of that helps. I've been told to maybe join Patreon. I'm not really sure I'm really interested in begging for money, but if, you, if you'd like to give me some, I'm happy to set that up. That'll be great. And that's about it. So take care. See you later. And stay safe. Don't touch things you shouldn't.